Okay. Now, once you're comfortable, okay, roll the shoulders. And if you want to, you can bring your hands, palms up in towards the hips and bring the elbows closer to each other behind the back. That will open the chest. Okay, the skin of the sternum will feel stretched. That's the extent to which you need to open the chest. Also, drop the elbows perpendicularly from the deltoids, which is the shoulders, muscles, to the elbows. Drop the energy perpendicularly down. When you do these things, you will eventually find that the side ribs kind of open up, giving more expansion to the intercostal muscles. You have both inner intercostals and outer intercostals. And when that happens, the breath will automatically come into the side ribs, which is what you're trying to achieve. Because when the breath comes into the side ribs, there's more transpiration of gases, more incoming oxygen, more outgoing carbon dioxide. If your legs are too tall, you may even cross them slightly and sit, which is perfectly okay. When you do that, your groin will open out. Observe these little details. They are very important. It is these little details which are like the roadmap to meditation because you're going within. Knowing these little things is like being able to understand the city that you're going to explore. And this is your inner city. This is your famous uh, Shambhala. Okay. Now, once you've got yourself there, when you're completely relaxed, I have some remnant food particles in my mouth. That's why I'm moving them. And gently, slowly now, take your attention inwards and towards the breath. Now, what you're going to do is observe. Remember, we learn in quantum physics that observation of an object can change the nature of the object, okay? Particles will turn into waveforms. Solid will turn into energy. So observe the breath. Watch it with your inner eye. Observe how the breath comes in and goes out. You can't choke yourself to death Try, you will not succeed. Unless you use some external means, the natural breath cannot be stopped to a point where you will suffocate and die. Because the breath is not controlled at the conscious level. The breath is controlled at the subconscious level. Know that and be free. By now, you will have attained, attained a certain state of Calmness and relaxation. Good. Because the moment your body becomes still, the mind becomes still. The body not moving at all is a sign of stillness of the body. The mind not having any thoughts at all, not moving into the past, not moving into the future, that is actually the only way it can move. Not doing that, the mind becomes still. Restedness of physical posture creates restedness of the mind. If your mind is not going into thoughts in the past, if your mind is not going to thoughts into the future, then you're in the ever-present. Observe that. Remember, I said, don't do anything. Don't increase the length of your breath inhalation. Don't increase the length of your breath in the exhalation. Just breathe normally, allowing the breath to take its own course.
take its own time. There will be coming times for you when in the future, after having practiced to breathe, watch, observe your breath this way, you'll be able to make adjustments. But right now, don't do anything. Remember, you're the observer. And the one that observes lies within. As the one that observes lies within and observes, all that is being observed will in its natural progression start changing for the better. There will be no ego involved. So don't try to do anything on your own. Besides trying to be still and besides trying to watch the breath. Observe that breath. Observe how it goes in. Observe how it comes out. And as you keep observing, the gap between the inhalation and exhalation will start extending with no conscious effort on your part. And again, as you start observing, the breath, the time between the exhalation and the inhalation will start extending again without any conscious effort on your part. We are a program that has been created in this hardware, which is the body. So this program runs on the mind. The brain is the central processing unit. There are instruments attached to it, just like in a laptop or in a, in a hardware, in a computer, PC computer. You have mouse, you have keyboard, you have different things attached to it. In the same way, this computer, this body, with the brain as the central processing unit, has got attachments to it. It's got hands, it's got legs. These attachments produce actions. which send messages to the brain and back and so on and so forth. Your breathing will deepen, not of your own accord. Avoid letting the ego sit in. Eventually, I will teach you how to travel out of this body into this vast universe around us and return. You'll first do it at an intellectual level, but eventually you will actually be doing it. It's possible. If my great-grandfather were to come here, he would not believe that birds made of metal, which make loud sounds of thunder, are able to carry eight to 900 people in them and go up in the air at 36,000 feet and travel two and three times the speed of sound before returning in one piece back to the earth. They would think that I was mad if I told them that. And yet today it happens. And so as we move from the third to the fourth to the fifth to the sixth dimension and so on and so forth, through meditation, we can achieve these impossible feats. The only question is, are you trying to achieve them? Because you will not do it that way. You should be trying to silence the mind and be still. If you have been still all this time without fidgeting or without moving around, even against your will, you will still have become silent because just have these you have these watches but when they shake they give you the time because the dialing takes place to your hand movement the same way thought processes are fueled in this body through physical movements various forms of physical movements energized by various forms of food and diet 
And if you can understand that, then you can go out there and grow. But right now, just stay still for a short while before we come back out of this meditation. And as you stay there in meditation, let me recite the Patanjali salutation. Yogena chittasya padena vacham Malam sharirasya chavaidya kena Yopakarutam pravaram maninam Pranam shvetam pranamami patanjali Yasjatva rupamadhyam prabhavati chakata nikadanugraya Prakshina Klesh Rashi, Vishama Vishadara Nekavaktra Subogi, Sarvagyanya Prashitir Bujaga Pritaya Yastenityam, Devo Isa, Vovyot Sita Vimalatanu Yoga the Yoga Yukta, Hario Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, Guru Shakshat Param Brahma, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha, Oh. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Continue in the state of meditation. Continue experiencing the bliss that comes from letting go and surrendering your body to higher dimensions of existence. We still have a little while left. Please stay. Continue watching the breath. Slow deep inhalations, relax, passive out being inhalations. I am not mind, I am not breath. I am not past, I am not present. It's all there in this song. It's a beautiful Sanskrit song.
I am bliss consciousness. I am Shiva. That's what Adi Shankaracharya said. According to Hindu philosophy, that's what we all are. Nukash Bhakti. No birth, no death. No relatives, no friends, no guru, no disciples. I am less consciousness. That's what I am. I am seen. And now prepare to return to this surroundings of wherever you are present, seated in meditation, silent in the mind, quiet and yet blissful. Serene. All religions were created from masters who tried to teach us this. And all religions have failed to do it. The only true religion is the religion of love. And it doesn't exist. Missiles and bombs and war don't produce. Thank you for sharing life with me today. Namaste. We have entered the meditation and I'll see you on the other side.